God who controls everything. The Bible says he upholds all things by the word of his power. I want you to focus on him tonight. And say, Father, take all the control. Take all the control. My fears, my concerns, take control. I cannot control everything. I cannot control everything. And I cannot control everything. I respond to you. There are times when they are not able to do as age as they Oh, Father, Jesus. Oh, Father, Jesus. Amen. Heavenly Father, I just want to pray on behalf of everyone here, of our church, the ministry, and everything that we do, Lord, and that we are. I commit everything on behalf of everyone here tonight and that those connected to us online and everywhere in the world. That, Lord, whatever thing that looks like is turning out of control, Lord, you will bring it under control. To Amen. Amen. We are giving you the permission to intervene. Yes. Amen. Amen. The conversation, the businesses, the, com the transactions, the part of our lives, we turn it over to you. Amen. Take all the glory. Amen. Amen. For somebody here who is restless and has been thinking, you've been wondering what you will do. You know you are not supposed to worry, but you don't know what to do. Today, God will give you direction. You don't know who this is for, but in the next 12 days, light will shine. you decide clearly what to do is it the absence of money is it the presence of problems is it the presence of you know different things that don't allow you to conclude on your own life that god will grant you a testimony hey! Say, Lord, I receive. Lord, I receive all of your goodness. All of your goodness. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's take our seats for this. Now, when you have committed everything to God, stop worrying, okay? Stop worrying. I know how it feels that you want to have everything correct. You don't want to do this. You don't want to do that. Just calm down, okay? Um, I believe that God remembered you tonight, and that's why He put you in my mind. When I say you, I mean that situation. Okay? Be encouraged. Tell me to love the encouraged. Be encouraged. You know that this Bible study session has practically turned to a discipleship session. Yes. You know, that's what it has to take. We, we might not call it to so it, that's what it really is. That those that are inspired and blessed. Last week, a lot of you came. Share with me that you were greatly blessed by the session of last week and all I mean, quite many of them, but I really was encouraged with the feedback of last week. You know, it's good to give feedback. When you are blessed, let's know. Share you understand. Yes, this feedback is not because I doubt if what I said was useful, but I think it blessed a lot of people. And let's just appreciate God for that. And just, uh, <laughs> so tonight, I want to two things and i want to go into it straight up but three things i want to do two things the second thing has two sides that's what i want to talk about but the first one is about what i usually will do um, and which is on questions i ask questions because not because i i don't know what to say but because i realize that if you are practicing what i'm teaching you in the last one we should have our challenges and don't come and meet me privately for the challenge if you can ask publicly, write it. Who knows you? Is others will just send it to me personally. You know, I will, I, I will know it's you, or you write it and I will not know it's you. Whichever way, I just don't want us to keep adding more knowledge, more knowledge to confusion. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Somebody is confused, very confused. I <laughs> don't know what to do. You're not telling me here another one. Too much knowledge can lead. I've been there before. I'm sat here 
sat inside church. When the pastor is preaching, and I'm like, sir, the last one you said, we never recover. You get what I'm saying? Yes, Especially for the kind of teachings that I teach. I have realized, at least my age and stage of ministry, that I'm an instructor of God's word. So I'm not going to say, I preach, I preach, and I think I do well. I teach, and I think I do Like this, what's next? Do you understand? Uh -huh. So I find out that the I'm, I'm, I'm not an aura, the seven candlesticks and the seven lampstands, or the meaning of the fifth period of era. That's not my ministry. Like, you know, <laughs> you are thinking about that, that the fifth period of era. How can that change somebody's life? How can that make somebody better? Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, so I've, I've, I've come to accept my responsibility as a pastor to preach and teach God's word that is applicable to people's benefits. So before I go into the teaching of what I'm to talk about tonight, which is the consciousness of faith, hope, and love, you know, I told you last week, I will now teach that message without my message notes. You see that as an understanding from it. All right, so if I forgot, I, the other car, I think the, I put inside the other car, then I changed it. But that's the problem. You can leave it tonight. All right, so. Um, let's look at it. Any question? Any good? Please, very good. Good. Is the hand going up? Good. Good. Please, very good. I like this. Because there's no point running, just going, yeah, be preaching, preaching, preaching. You understand? That, yes, sir. Do you really understand? You have changed the color of your hair. You see me as the old girl. Nice. Please, now. Yeah, so can we take it tonight? Who, who, is, who is taking first? Let me see your hands up one more time. If questions. One, two, Three for diabetes, she and she All right, that's fine. Let's go. So, uh, Flo, your first shoot. Make it powerful straight. Boom, bam. Yeah. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Um, thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you, sir, for the opportunity. So, um, while you talked to us on, um, you know, having an open eye and open ears and a um, house to receive the word, uh, I was trying to study on my own and I found them. Um, some of your teachings on direction and revelation. But I was um, at a crossroad of knowing what it seems too similar for me to be able to pick out the difference between revelation and direction. So that's um, my question. I want to know the difference between revelation and, um, and direction and the similarities between both of them. Very good question. All right, quickly, next question. Thank you, sir, for the opportunity. Uh, so an incident happened yesterday and today at work. And um, you know what, I think it was last week, you were mentioning that it's important for us to do so many. So during the conversations of um, engaging with those graduate training, so the trial this week, we have it this for Final level interview, so we came physically into the office. And so, so most of the chiefs had to go out and had to just engage. So I was pushed to go and engage them. So subconsciously, I started talking Jesus, Jesus. I mean, I was scared of the guy also. So yesterday, it happened that I I was telling them the things they were going to ask them. And of course, I used Jesus. And I was telling them that it was going to happen to them. I was telling them what you said that every generation, one of those things. And they felt inspired. So today again, it happened again. But today is so I don't know. So they started calling, they started saying, the guy started saying um, that you are the Jesus we are seeing here. And I'm like, yeah, stop it. Stop that. <laughs> I'm very good. <laughs> I'm very good. I'm very good. Just stop it. So my question is relating to, so I've been asking for. <laughs> so there's one particular, there are two particular guys, like, you know when you are in there, and I'm trying to, like, profile them, and I'm profiling them correctly, right, so there was one particular lady, I told her, she, I said, you don't go to church, why? She said she does not, she does not, she's not just interested, I said, okay, I will get your contact, another guy the same thing, but I told her that they are going to ask me a question about why you don't go to church, and it happened when she got sick. Wow. Right, so my question is, what's happening to you? Yes, that's <laughs> because it seems like 
because today and I kept reading that I'm not a pastor. Please keep that out of your mind. That I'm also a work in progress. <laughs> Do it to a very large extent. Some of the things that you said, I tried pushing it to their heart because I wanted to, all of it to pass. Right? Yes. I wanted to ask about because I didn't think it's I just yes. so I'm so asking you so <laughs> if it's a mat because I'm asking for open uh, ears and eyes. So I was when I was coming, I was trying to connect that what is really happening to you. Right? Because I know that I was even trying to to be honest, I was trying to act very social. But I ended up talking mm -hmm. about Jesus in the long run. Right? Yes, so I really want to know what's going on. <laughs> it's not like you think it's a joke? <laughs> no, no, I'm being honest. <laughs> 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 Well understood, Allah said. Hallelujah. We all know the answer. Hallelujah. Hello. 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 Remember you teaching us about the economy of grace and the currency of grace and the rules fit us to play. So something is still not clear to me. You said uh, what is not available in the economy of grace that faith cannot utter and not have. So, I thought it was an uh, insight that, uh, or was it a finances an insight or an instruction that uh, we should write down the, our expected balance by faith at least for the end of the year. So, if I wrote down a million naira, for example, and by the end of the month, all I could make is like 500 hours. So does it mean that a million is not available for me in the economy of grace? <laughs> or what is the author of that? She, oh, yeah. God bless you. Thank you very much. You know what I will do? We are going to answer the question together. Yes, sir. So I don't just think it's only me. We are, you must learn this thing. Yes, sir. We must understand this thing. Yes, sir. It's not, if it's not working, let's close shop. Okay. If it's working, let's get a chance. Do you, yes! yes sir. If God be God, let's serve him. Yes, sir. If he's not God, let's keep him somewhere. Mm. But he's God. Yes, sir. Yeah. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Yes, That's my attitude, though. I mean, Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm not here to be, be patching for him. If he doesn't have answers, don't worry, Lord. When you have answers, call me back. But he Thank has you. answers. Yes, sir. Glory to God. Hallelujah. One side the question is by mercy. All right, go ahead, please. Hallelujah. Thank you very much for this opportunity. You're welcome. Good new ventures. So while going through um, this series, Acerations, Acerations and Many Testimonies, I am having I'm having a refer back to when uh, we did motions and movements for the spirit. <laughs> so my question pretty much is uh, you how do you sustain your acceleration and testimonies? Now I will bring you back to uh, when it's written in the book of Psalm that delight yourself in the Lord, He will grant you the desires of your heart. So my question now is, if I desired, let me use the question as one million naira, and in my instance, I got the one million naira. So should I desire ten billion? So what is the justification for you to uh, keep on accelerating and getting more testimonies? Oh, the question is actually, what is the balance between your desires and 
not either being too greedy, over zealous, over enthusiastic, and unrealistic that you might even fall into using God to get what you want. Like you said, not even waiting for God to give you what he wants to give you, which will most likely and most assuredly be more than what you want for yourself. That's my question, sir. So how do you sustain your acceleration and many testimonies? And how do you keep on improving and increasing the desires of your heart? Say, for instance, I desire a Mercedes uh, Benz C Class 2020. I got it. Now I want 2024. I got it. Now I want a Lamborghini. I got it. So how do we balance ourselves not to start using God as a tool for just, as a tool for just getting what we want, not to actually get what He has for us, even while we are accelerating and grabbing our destinies? Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Do you find that question relevant? Very relevant. Yes. Very true. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> Once again, we want to look into your word. You. These questions are like a compass towards what you want us to discuss tonight. Yes. Therefore, Holy Spirit, we ask that the answers to these questions will be from you. Amen. That you will build us in the knowledge of your will. Amen. In all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Amen. Let our articulation and understanding be precise. Amen. And help everyone be able to live here nourished with the knowledge of these answers. Amen. That your kingdom will forge ahead both in our lives and in our community. Amen. Promise to return all the glory to you. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Right. I also have a question. At the end of my brief explanation, I would um, ask my question. But before I start, May I give anybody a chance to respond to any of the questions? The liberty to speak from just if you have an idea to either somebody's question or something. Just so that it, I want to know how much you also know. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Some of you here, you know that you are growing in Christ. The more you talk, the better you will be. As you are, let me just tell you something. The summary of your life should be my kingdom right now. You should by now be making up your mind that this is my man of God and I'm here to live and serve this man of God and serve God in this man of God. That's, if you have not gotten there, you are, not, you are not getting the point you're making. You should, have, you should get to that point where you know that we are in this thing together. And I'm saying, somebody is asking you that question as a minister. What would your answer be? So if you have any answer to any of the questions, not necessarily your own, but I think so to share. Go ahead. All right. You ready? You have one. Or, or, so, so take I, yeah. I want to uh, attempt Reverend uh, Ayo's question. Okay. So I, I could remember when you taught us on um, managing expectations, and most recently you've also taught us that the the proof the proof that God is working is not that you got the answer. Whether or not you get the answer to your prayer, God is still God. So meaning that you use your prayer to get something, it didn't come. It does not justify if that thing you are requesting is available in the economy of grace or not. First, that's one way. Another way can be that perhaps there is a knowledge you are currently lacking that has not been able to improve your own capacity to be able to get from God. That's another way. Now, the third way, for instance, can be that the blessings of the Lord make it rich and add it no sorrow. God will not bless you with more than you can handle. Meaning that maybe right at that point where you are, God knows what is best for you and he has given you just what you might need. So that is an attempt to this question. Do you guys hear what the children say? Did you hear it? Did you agree with him? Which part don't you agree? Second part. Your capacity. Your capacity. I wrote. Not by faith. 
Yes. That. Yes. <laughs> and that, that was the capacity of my faith. Yes. When I was writing. Yes. Yeah. So it's okay. Whichever one. I just wanted to be sure that you appreciated the first and second point. Yes. You, you think that is also true. He's not saying it is. He's just giving us that was my friend's passion. passion. So you, you would like me to still speak to you? Yes. You really? God bless you. I just want to point. Okay, well, okay. Yeah. So the difference and similarities between uh, revelation and direction. Yes. So I think you get revelation through prophetic instructions. Then you can get direction in different ways. Through the word, through prayers, and through doctrine. So meaning that I can become a Christian. And because I am now born again, I am now a Christian. And I'll get a direction on how to live my life. Now, I don't need to receive a prophetic word that because you are now a Christian, now that you are born again, this is what you should do. So I can be directed through the word, through doctrine, which is, I, I'm, not, I'm not a virtuous Christian sinner. I went through, I, I went through a BTS. There are so many ways you can pattern your life. That way you can say, okay, this is what is directing my decision and my judgment. Now, revelation can be that a man of God spoke to you. You know that you are, your direction is in the next two years. I'm and I'm going to do this. A man of God now spoke to you that in the next six months, you are going to Canada. So I, I feel like in the I can attend that one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In addition to what you know, Mr. Shedrick said, okay. uh, yeah, so you always told us that um, when there is need, there is grace. And also, um, faith always works. So that um, you wrote down one millionaire and you get 500,000, might be that you always say that faith also grows. So maybe that is at the level where your faith has grown. So that is what I want to say concerning that. And concerning uh, Mr. Gisever's question, I would just say it's influence. Uh, so, you know, we are people of influence, and there's no way you will be old and you will not become. So, the more of the word you hear is the more that you also become. So, yeah. that is all I have for So, I will now respond since there are no more hands. Okay, I want to try and attend to the board. Okay, please go ahead. So, I just want to see from the angle of what you told us. So, if one actually ask a question. Sometimes at this on Wednesday, and uh, my approach would be that he said, when there is need, there is grace. Available. So it's, it's, to me, it means that he probably not being conscious that he could, God could use him to speak to them and give them what was knowledge part time was one thing that he just walked into the consciousness without knowing. So it means that if practicing that uh, that gift from time to time, you will probably grow in it. So is that he made himself available for use. At that particular time, and God was able to use him through the spirit in man that gives man understanding. In that same scripture in the Job 20, 38, 32, verse 8. So that's the way I am able to figure out that. Thank you very much. So, just to um, answer Mr. Uh, Joseph's question, yes. You know, you've always told us that he was talking about so many. And you said that even the Jesus himself, before he speaks to people, he already has them what they have. He said they have five issues. He knew that sometimes when you perform miracles, it gives you an access to the heart of the people. Yes. So God giving you a word at that time is a desire that you want to bring those people to, to your king, to his kingdom. So for you to start is for you to finish. For you to say, okay, if I've been able to give you this. There's a place where you come to, whereby you can hear more of it. So, and I can use myself as an example. Like sometimes when I desire to speak to people, I ask for God, and when you give me instruction, it's an easier communication for me to tell them that this is where I'm feeding from. And so, I'm speaking to that. That's a balance of you saying that is for you to know that there's more of room of God calls in your life. So you always tell us that this is what how far we desire that God is going to place. Amen. So it's because you have got into that level of desire and you want God to speak to you in this certain way. God is proving to you that I'm right here. You are so you've told us many times that it is also the level of your capacity of how test you have to God determine the kind of decisions that God is making. Thank you very much, sir. Amen. Let's try to do this.
this now. So uh, let me start first with Joseph's question. Joe, so what I'll tell you is that there are there are things that happen to us as a function of the promptings of the Holy Spirit, okay, as gifts. So how many of us have seen that film calling and something like that? Uh, one eh? Uh, God's calling God's calling eh? Not the Nigerian one. No, the one that one missing in the airplane. Yes. One. Some of the first. Manifest. Manifest. Okay. Have you seen manifest? Yes, sir. I just wanted to use that to say. So what happens is that we are spirits. Amen. Amen. Listen well. We are spirits. And as we are spirits like this, spirits, even a little child can be used. Even a little child can be used. Even a little child can be used. And she will speak. For those that don't understand me, I just said, where are you coming from? It should be from Starbank, case place you are coming from. And, and, and they will say, eh, me buy no in song. I don't know if you understand yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. So though she's talking, but it's not her talking. It's a spirit talking to her. Do you understand? Yes. Now we, we experience similar things that we talk. And sometimes when we finish talking, we realize it's not us talking. Yes. Is that the kind of thing that happens to me? Mm-hmm. Or like is that, if I understood this, am I correct? Yes. A bit or a bit. okay. How does it work for you? Just know, and then you are talking to somebody. No, it just we're just having conversations, and, and those just spots, chip it, and just chip it in. those chipping ins were not you at all. Eh, that's what I'm trying to say now. So I wanted to try to this. Yes, this is the idea. You know, so I want to know that the moment you make yourself a yielded vessel, God can talk to you. Yes. Do you understand? Yes. Once you make yourself now, there are many things applied to that. Like someone said, I think it's Dickie, I just said, you can, you can have that gifting or that use. When the Bible says that we should be oracles of God and not know why it is coming. Do you understand? You can, you can find out it's coming, it's coming at some point. If you're not careful, you want to start to prove that you have it mm. and use it to perform that. I can always tell you what is right. The truth about it is that it's of the spirit that you can harness. Now, in First Corinthians 12, it's called the word of knowledge. Yes, sir. And the one that is about to happen is called the word of wisdom. So word of knowledge tells you about what has happened to you in the past. Word of wisdom tells you about what is about to happen in the future. Do you understand? Yes, they are called oratory gifts. All right, um, or revelatory gifts, beg your pardon. That's word of knowledge. For you to know what has happened is a revelation. For you to know what will happen is a revelation. Do you get what I'm saying? Now, for you to know what is happening now, for example, prophecy too, is like that. For God to show you what is going on, you know, either that will come or that. So, what I want to draw your attention to is that if you find yourself operating at that level of word of wisdom, which is the ability to foretell what is going to happen, or speaking to someone what has happened to you or her, you know. One of the things we want to do is to understand the purpose of the gift. Do you get it? Once you're able to articulate the purpose, which is what I think Dickie was saying, that thankfully you are thinking about leading them to Christ, making them come to church. Make sure that, because gifts themselves are not an end. They are tools to achieve an end. So what can the end be? To lead men into the same grace of Christ, like what Dickie was saying, that when you um, have such gifts, it's not just for you to show that you have a gift. It's not to reveal you. It's to reveal Christ. It's to reveal the glory of God and to compel men to the saving knowledge of the Lord's grace. So I would urge that whenever you notice such gifts, don't stop. Don't stop. Don't, don't feel overwhelmed. Keep doing it. That's how it will grow. If you withdraw it, all you just need to add, add to it now is purpose. What's it? Just plug in with purpose. That's all. And God will find Flowing. Do you understand? So it's just like money. Too. When God knows that you know the purpose of money, if you keep flowing, do you get gifting? Money is not an end, it's a tool to an end, it's a means to an end. So the same thing, spiritual gifts, 
when God knows that he can channel you and use it to speak, it's not to start to sniff people's life. Do you understand what I'm saying? There is a chance to help you compel men to believe. Like Dickie said, Dickie was very apt with it. That when God shows you something, it's so that you can make men believe. You know, even when these jazz guys wants to get involved, they show you things about yourself. Just to make you know that um, we know something. You know? Yes. And so it can be very compelling. Somebody is telling your middle name, the name of the primary school you went to. Ah, it must be something. But really and truly, I've told you before. Are you listening to me? Yes. Yes. I've told you before that the realm of the spirit is like an open market. Yes. It's not. It's not peculiar that you know something. With the way we know whether you are the spirit of God is what you channel that that revelation towards. If it points us to Christ, it's a good gift. If it points us to shamanism, it's a mischievous one. Do you understand what I'm saying? So the purpose eventually qualifies because just like you are sensing it, another person who is who is a man who can know something. I say, in fact, I will tell you more than what uh, Joseph told you. Do you get? Are you? You can be mesmerized by that. So we don't follow those giftings, but they are leading towards what God they want us to do. Don't forget that the giftings point to the callings. Remember we said that Romans 11, 29. The giftings and the callings of God are without repentance. So when you want to know your calling, check your gifting. When you want to know your gifting, check your calling. Mm-hmm. Check out what comes first. You're fine. Do you understand? So what I mean I will direct it to you is that there's a call of God on your life to utilize you for his kingdom. That's practical. And like what he really said also, for influence, you are using it. And how you now use it, how you sharpen it is up to you. But trust me, if you are under my covering, you will not get it wrong. I will not touch you, but you will get what to do. <laughs> That's the truth. I know what you are saying, and I know what you are going through. It's not anything very deep. Just keep flowing with the Spirit of God. Keep flowing and keep sharpening it. Sometimes we get it very accurate. Other times, not so accurate. Don't feel bad. The way to sharpen it is to keep fighting it. So, so keep using it. It's very important that you don't stop. Okay? Don't be afraid. God's hands. Just what I can just take you is stay with the word. Just stay with the word. The word is our balancer. I don't know if there's a word like that too. That you will never get it wrong just listening to the word. It will shape you. Without aid or support, it made the whole levels of the earth. It will catch up with you. Shame you get. So don't be afraid, maybe how what's it? Don't, don't be esoteric about it. Just stay faithful. Just keep listening to God's word. When it comes, stay humble. If I don't feel spectacular, just keep listening to God's word. Keep guiding yourself with God's word. You cannot go wrong. Do you understand? Yes, Let's go to number two. Direction and relation. See that? Direction and relation. I'm not sure which of the messages you listen to, but direction is a very... Um, it's a very it can, direction can be given by revelation. All right? Revelation can bring direction. But revelation is not only for direction. Revelation can be for information. Do you understand? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. So revelation is the information that comes from the spirit of God to the human spirit. That is, it comes in a supernatural way to reveal to you something or someone or events to come. It's a revelation. It's not all revelations you need to do something. But direction comes to point you to what you now need to do. Do you get what I'm trying to say? So he says, take up your bed, leave Ikeja, go to a papa. That's direction. Do you understand? How that direction comes can be by revelation. And it can come. Victor, Victor, carry your bed. Do you understand what I'm saying? At another time, it can be that you saw yourself in a papa. You don't have anything to do with that, but you saw the house, two B, Clinton Road, um, Wharf, Papa. Do you understand? And then you check Google, and there's true, true, two B, Clinton Road. Okay, I'm going to show you something more. <laughs> do you understand? But any of these revelations or stuff, don't don't be impressed by them. Check with the Word of God. Check their direction. Check why. Okay, because the devil does appear. As an angel of light, also, and you want to be careful. So, we use the word of God to checkmate it. I get a message. The Bible says we should test all spirits. Yes, sir. So, don't just be impressed that something was revealed to you. For what? The devil took and revealed something to you. Yes. The devil stood in front of Jesus like this, and Jesus not casting out. 
That's the front of Jesus. I was conversing with Jesus. I just was in Kentucky. It's So he was. I mean, he took him. That's Satan took Jesus. I'll let you hear it back. So, Revelation. Are you listening? The word of God remains our ultimate guide. Praise the Lord. See after I said the word of God. The word of God remains our ultimate guide. It is our ultimate guide. Say it is not in the word. It is not in the word. Say it is not in the word. It is not in the word. It becomes questionable. It becomes questionable. All right. Let me come to Ayo's question. How about doing justice to you? Revelation can come by the word. It can come, um, by, uh, you know, you can be reading the scripture. For example, in him was life, and the life was the light of men, and that word became flesh. Something comes out of it. That's a revelation. That's a revelation. That inspiration that is God breathed is different from information. What you learn, but revelation is an information inspirited by the word of God. That energy of the supernatural is involved in revelation. Do you understand what information would do for you? Revelation would do much more, and it comes through the interaction of the Holy Ghost. Do you understand? So. There are many ways by which we can get direction. The word of God, a man of God, your inner voice, you know, um, a book, ask question. You can know what to do. By so direction is very key. For example, the Bible says, trust in love with all your hearts. Can we complete it? In all your ways. So you see that trusting in God, God will direct your path. The Bible says in Isaiah 30 verse 1, it says that you shall hear a voice saying to you, turn like this, turn like this. That is not revelation. That is not The Bible says wisdom is profitable to direct us. That means you look at two things. Fire is burning here, there's a, a boss here, and you can drive. I, 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 you don't need to come, leave the fire. No, the fire. Do you understand? So, Direction comes in very multiple ways, and a Christian who understands his rights in the kingdom should always expect to get direction. <coughs> then the Bible now says, when you are confused and you don't know what to do, ask for wisdom. Yes, and wisdom will direct you. Do you understand what it says? Yes, so you won't be stranded again in Jesus. Amen. Amen. Say that amen, they get more power. Amen. amen. So let's take on Ayo's um, discussion. Ayo, so it's very simple. It still stands straight, and it's not me that said it, it's a principle of scriptures. That what the word, when we say grace, we mean the supply of God. That is what God, and he says, My grace is sufficient for you. If you don't have all I've supplied, it's not because I've not supplied it. Do you get what I'm saying? I have supplied to you, and as I was talking about, being supply conscious. Yes, sir. But you don't do this thing to test God and put 1.5. Not well, if it's 1.2, no. What you do is that you understand that you are on a journey with God, and God will supply all your needs. According to his riches. This is not just a theory. I really don't want you to think we're just trying to throw words out or theories. No. Calm down. Don't be interested in getting. Be interested in a relationship with God. First. Do you understand? If you use God like an ATM, you will be disappointed. <laughs> Even me does not like being used like that. There are some people that used to attack me these days. They'll be coming, they'll be increasing. My phone. I don't know how they got my number. One was coming out that someone used my name and my PVN and my uh, NI and has everything. And he was talking to me, in, you know, anyhow. And he said, I don't know anybody like this. I was, you know, and I can be very polite like that <laughs> until I change it for you. You know, I said, I, I don't know this person now. He said, There's a tourist if I in what place is anyone like that? I'm not aware of. I don't know who there is. I don't know what it is. So there's a tourist if I in white quick that use your name and I say in me. He said, I don't know anybody like that. He said, Your choice. The person you gave us your name, NI. Please, any typical person, let me give my oh, hand. Uh, so I just I said, I'm sorry, I'm not the I now cost. No, you're not talking about vision. It's my phone now. Yes. And then the call. I checked the red there, pressed the red button. He called back. So he said, I caught the phone. I said, You have to come in with me. So I caught the phone. He started calling back. I said, If only you know who you are dealing with. I will, I will also deal with you that you will not, your generations will not recover. Now, the point I'm trying to make from there is that the person who is in need that went to borrow may be trying to get something that has not been supplied. 
So you hang because you are trying to. I'm, I'm just saying in case the person is truly in that church. I'm pleased they're not church. Don't use my name for things that, that I don't know about. I will deny you. I will deny. I'm not. My job job is not to reference you. As a pastor, we don't even reference people. We don't do it. If you want to hear it clearly, don't ever come and me. I will disappoint you. I, you know, I say publicly so before you came. You have not come. Don't bother come and say my pastor. I will not reference you. Because if I reference, I will reference everybody. If I can reference you, then I can reference everybody. And if I choose to reference everybody, it's not your business. It's my choice outside my capacity as a person. It's not my duty. Uh, do you understand what I'm saying? So that you don't say, should you say you're not referencing anything? I reference this one does not concern me on my personal note as a human being. And I have the right to be a human being. Yeah. So if I don't reference you, it's not anything personal. You might just not have enough relationship with me. And I'm not going to reference anybody. Let's just be clear. So that it's like, and if I choose to, it's like my liberty. I will not be bound by whatever you do. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, what am I trying to speak to you? So, I have a relationship with God. So, what I wanted to also bring out of that discussion, somebody was asking me for money. I said that my money is sick, my clinic is bad, my clinic is. And I'm like, there's no relationship with us. You just want to get money from me and go. Ah, it's not fair now. Why? Will you don't come to our church and even hear me small and increase my attendance. No relationship, just transaction. Even we as human beings don't like it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, There's no, nothing coming from you in exchange other than everything coming from me to you. I didn't answer them. If you see what is in their heart, I didn't answer the person for just two days. The person abused his grandfather. I said, that, Is this how heartless you are? Ah, this, you want to collect my money and you're abusing me. <laughs> so imagine that I'm giving such a person money. He didn't come for anything. He just sees this guy on billboard and this guy got me up to now. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, so don't come to God for transaction. When we talk about grace, there's an interaction with the provider of that grace. Yes, sir. That God is the one you should interact with. By the time before you even ask, you without supply. Yes, yeah. sir. Before you ask. And then when you want to now ask for something specifically, your spirit man will resonate with it and say, this is the right thing. And when you ask for the right, because many people are looking for solution on how to get their needs met. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say something about that shortly. But you must understand that God is not your source of just providing things for you. God is talking about riches of his glory that you have encountered. In other words, there's a relationship that should come between you and God. That relationship, that's why we're talking about receiving the blesser than the blessing. Mm -hmm. So that relationship brings you to the point that my own addition to what the gentlemen have said is when now it now turns out that you do not get that specific amount based on your relationship of the goodness of that supplier, you will know that you will judge him faithful that though he did not supply that money, all is still going to work for my good because of that relationship. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. You will you will judge God faithful that. No, it's did not go as I thought. Because I know him. Do you get my point? Yes. That your knowing of him makes you choose for him. Yeah. And say, I know whatever has happened, happened for my case. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. I don't know whether this story is going to work for you. But some people get disappointed. A man of God died in the United States of America. And there's a particular pastor who has been preaching that you cannot die. No, we should not die like that, you know? Just like I preach also, you know? And then, the man who was so angry, and then while he was asking God, he was scaring, what happened? How come this man of God died? He had a voice, turn left. If you really talk once, he said, turn left. He said, before he was, I mean, just turned and left. As he just swapped, a trailer came from nowhere. And hit everything behind him. He said, if you that you turn now, will the people be asking, how come this man is not so dying? Hey, maybe that one too did not agree. That's what he said. Ah, yeah. ah, we yeah. saw the results. <laughs> then what happened in between? We don't know. No, no, yes, sir. So the guy is concerned. Lord, why did this one die? Just similarly, like you have to for the supply of one five. We didn't see it. Maybe God told you to do something you refused. Mm. Yes. Because, 
Christian has tested his side. <laughs> <laughs> he has tested the right side. He has decided, I don't understand how <laughs> this guy. And he told me, <laughs> very bad practice guy. He said, sir, I had to test this thing before, before <laughs> this time. I want to understand <laughs> this thing <laughs> first. <laughs> because nobody wants to be deceived. Yes. Yes. Everyone wants to be, ah, I got it right. Mm. So, but on the other hand, we don't know what God has told you to do on yes. the other side. So that's it. No, no, no. I'm actually killed the man. Million. When he was rich, one fifty. So the first thing is to see. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> so there are instructions that it does not happen to all of us. Yes, yeah. sir. So you are practically thinking that the money must be like this one. I'm saving this one. This God, one, not must be must be one million. million. <laughs> but God says you so. He will say that when you sow five thousand or fifty thousand or something, more cannot come from where it came from. Now, one of the blessings that come with giving, let me just add this as, in, as an addition. Because a lot of people used to test, test their Lord, their God. <laughs> you know what they, they, they know that the voice of God is talking. They don't want to agree. <laughs> you don't play pranks with The Bible says God is not mocked. Yes, sir. Once you sow, you will reap. Galatians 100. 6 7. 100. God is not playing pranks with you now. Of all the people in this world, it's you God will now play pranks with you. Do you get my point? Yes, sir. So don't let it uh, affect your spirit, man, and commitment. Just stay faithful with the Lord. And let me tell you something. At a level of relationship with God, you will know that God is too good. To, to, it's not about what you need, it's that He is good in your life. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Yes. You know, you can sit here and think that what you need is this. Where else that's not what you need? Yes, sir. Have you not seen when people are sick? They ask for what they don't need. But that, for example, He's not supposed to drink water. He's asking, give me water. Give me water. And then the doctor said, don't give him water. Have you seen water? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So God knows you more. Be interested in deepening your work with God. If God gives you blessing more than a certain you, do you understand? So you want to get carried away with that conversation. I hope that helps you. Please. There's one more. So, um, your question is an extension of his own in the reverse or so. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, I, I would think that, you know, you know, like I said to Josh, I said something about money. That just like spiritual things, that's how money is. Money is actually a physical tool. There was a scripture I wanted to quote on you. I pray the Lord reminds me. But there's a scripture that I wanted to share with you. But if I remember, that's why I was saying something more. There's a scripture on you. If I remember. So, in, in, in that um, question, Shadrach, you're talking about how that our supplies, we should not be using God like as if we got this, we move forward, we get this, move forward, we get, you know. And, and, and the truth is that it's, it has its place. When you, what you have got to, you need to get more. The purpose of getting is giving. Let's not, let's not make a mistake. Yes, the purpose of getting a bigger car is to serve God in a bigger way. Yeah. Mm. The purpose of getting anything is the purpose of the kingdom. And I'm just saying that to make you understand that God is not just giving you a grant to those things because your faith now has learned the skill of acquisition. That's not what faith is for. Faith helps us get what we need for us to fulfill the purpose we need. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Yeah. It's not just a technology to say your needs are met. No, that's not the need. Your needs are met for an end. I keep saying that. Trust me, your comfort is to comfort that people. I showed that to you scriptures. Yes, Second Corinthians chapter one. Yes, so imagine the God of all if I have calls him the God of all comforts. Comforts you so that with the comfort you get, you can comfort other people. The Bible says that the things that are written are for our learning, so that from our own, from their story, we can learn how to live our lives. We may have hope. Comfort of the scriptures, we may have hope. Okay? So, I'm trying to draw your attention to the fact that that acquisition, acquisition will only be tamed by purpose. Whatever thing you want to get is the purpose for getting that matters. So, desiring more is, is greed when it's not purpose for feeling. Mm. Did you get what I yes, Desiring more, I just want more, I just want more, yes. is greed when it is not pursuing purpose. Mm. Do you get what I'm saying? So, yes. if you have some money, for example, and your money is not serving the purpose, and I'm saying that category, money is very tricky. Money is very tricky. I have come to accept 
For example, money ranks in the wisdom of God on this earth. Hmm. Check out Ecclesiastes chapter 7 says that God is a defense, wisdom is a defense. It says money is a defense, God and um, wisdom is a defense, money is a defense. Ecclesiastes chapter 7. Is it chapter 7? Check it for me. That's that's uh, ta ta ta. Check it. It should be 7, 8. Or it says money is a defense, wisdom is a defense. Then now it says in Job 20, 21, 22, that Job 22, I mean, that God too is a defense, or God wants to be your defense. Uh -huh, 7 12. For wisdom is a defense, and money is a defense. But the one that is, but the excellency of knowledge, that is, that is, that wisdom given life to them, but money cannot give life. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So what he's saying is that money and wisdom run together, but money cannot give life. Wisdom can give life. Mm -hmm. Are you seeing? Yes, the Lord says in Job 22, verse 21, that God wants to be Job 22, verse 22. It says, I pray now that I start with him and be at peace. Thereby, which I come unto you. Receive my prayer in the Lord of his heart and lay up his heart. Lay up his words in my heart. And if thou shalt return, verse 23, if thou shalt return unto the Almighty, thou shalt be built up. Put away me at the prayer of the 24. It says, Then shall thy thou lay up gold as dust, and the gold of the field as the stones of books. Verse 26, 25. See this, one. see what it says. Yea, the Almighty shall now be your defense. That thing money was, that wisdom was, God wants to be to you. Mm. Are you guys getting what I'm saying? Yes, that you will no longer be thinking uh, on your ears. He now says, that silver, you will not have plenty. Kaya, when I'm your defense. When I'm your defense. Kaya. Some people spend money, some people use wisdom. Some of us spend God. Mm. Yeah. Ah. Yes, sir. It's God. Kaya. If you ask me, this letter in June, July, I was compelled to pay some money. Good money. All right. I was going to pay for the Q7. I wanted to pay for my school fees. It was, all of it was about $11,000. I've paid. Praise God. Yeah. 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 The journey started. The journey started. Like, when they were asking me, I wanted to pay a program in the rest of East London and all that. Then they just, you know, just to learn and be sharp in my mind. You know that kind of thing. Just be sharp. You know what I mean, Victor? Yeah. As I tell I was talking about, I didn't have the money. But this man was resolved. This man was resolved. And sometimes I used to want to, you know, use every German German. But I just found out that it was a lot easier this month. It was a lot easier this month. Mm. $11,000 is something. You saw You saw I was checking it, yes. I was checking my fees, the amount I was supposed to pay. No, 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 it's not up to them. That was a 5.5 million. And the other one is a. Three thousand dollars. Three thousand dollars. So the other one's three thousand dollars brought you about five point five million, and the other one's five thousand dollars. Yes. Yeah, I'm confusing it. No, 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 no. Sorry, we can't read. Eleven million naira. Sorry, not dollars. Did I say dollars? Well, yes. No, it's not dollars. It's eleven million naira. Yes. Because five point five was five point five. Yes. Do you understand? Yes. What am I just trying to say? That's a lot of money in one month. Trust God for. Because those guys said you must pay within 30 days. And I said, I will choose it. Do you know what I'm trying to say? So it was an until max gets said go. If I did not pay it, heaven will not fall. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Does not mean God is the truth. Does not mean God has failed me. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, but I decided I'm going to pay this money. Sir. I'm going to pay it. And heaven survived. So it's actually 11 million, like not 11,000. Sorry. I will, I will get to what I'm trying to say. Yes, so what I'm trying to draw attention to is that you need to learn how your faith works. All right? Take baby steps. There was a time I was looking for just one million. Yes. Or oh, that thing looked like die. <laughs> <laughs> you guys can't get it. Every month. Every month. <laughs> Sometimes it's 600 k to pay rent. Sometimes it's 200,000. Ah! I didn't know that God was stretching me. Was stretching me. Ah! Oh, I, I, if they said do that course again, I won't do that course. It was like die. I don't know if you know what I'm saying. Exactly. Okay. 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 Okay
Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Are you listening? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let God stretch you. Yes, sir. Let your faith learn how to grow. Let God become your currency. Mm. Let God become your defense. Yes, sir. I can tell you, when I use the word we spend God, it means that God is the one providing. Mm. Not your wisdom, mm. not your defense, not your money. Mm. It's, it's gradual, shall you? As you grow, you learn to depend on God. Do you understand? Yes, I hope this blesses our hearts. Yes, so, purpose is what you do greed. Mm. Purpose, that greed of acquisition, that sense of acquire, 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 and get a purpose will checkmate greed in your life. At some point, like I was saying the other day, now, there are some times that when you see your clothes too much, you should know that it's time to give out. You should, you should not be asking, I'm just gathering, I'm just gathering the clothes. No, you should, you should know that it's time to give out. Like, it happens to me sometimes that it's time to give out. I need to offload my luggage. I need to give out. Do you understand? Yeah. That's it when you, when you are making some money, you should know that it's time to give. It's time to give. It's time to give. It's time to give. You should know. Not that you need have taken pleasure in acquiring. So for example, let me use an illustration and I will speak this what I will say. You know, I, I realized at some point that you know what's their job, get a good car and just be driving a good car. Until Mama and Victor went to drop Arnold in school. That's Alex, Mama and Victor went to drop myself. And was it just Papa? Okay. One of them. I think I was talking about that's why we were confusing about that just that day. Jasper. They went to drop my son in school. I'm gonna so car hang for road. Ah, that day I decided one thing. I had to call my friend, talk midnight, to follow one. You know those days of terrible traffic. Yes. That day I realized it's not smart to have one car in this Lagos. Because that car nice. stopped. It was night. I had to go and bang on my friend's door. Trap this kind of traffic that you know this kind of traffic that does not have I don't know if you know what I mean. I took my friend's car, drove one way, almost to where I don't remember. Redemption. Redemption camp, definitely. One the traffic was following me like you know when traffic on the other way and this other way is free. But there's barricade, you can't partition. So it's of joining the face one way. You know what I'm saying? So going was free, normal roads. The issue was if I was to come back, I have to then enter the traffic from the back. <laughs> Thank God I have the traffic. So I came out like this, and, uh, and then long and short, we go home around two or one, maybe past one or something. Very late at night, sleep. sleep was in terrible. <laughs> and I realized that there is no shame in having two cars. <laughs> One car can break down. It's you that is poverty is killing that you yes. why would I need two cars? I will never need two cars. <laughs> when you need car, you will know that you need two cars. <laughs> you understand what I say, yeah? So my point is that purpose makes you have to get a ladder. Tonight I was coming. The steering of the car was coming from just one. Car I drove to pick an old dude. They're coming out and just the street. I think the car steering oil finished. I had to go back and pack down. Now we can't be struggling to turn car. So you can do you understand what I say? I thought there was an alternative. Enter the alternative. Don't be saying ah no no. That's what I thought too before. But I realized that no. There's wisdom in having a backup car. There's wisdom. So I was trying to say uh, give it come we we'll manage the car we have until the guest minister came that was that time and the car failed in the hands of a man I know does not like to fail. I decided no get a solid car. That's there's no prayer point in carrying your man of God. Yes, sir. Do you understand what I say? And I, I had to stretch that much. It looked like an extra. But it's worth it. That the whole church will not have a good car to pick a man of God. It's not good now. Do you guys get what I'm saying? Yes, so purpose makes meaning of acquiring or getting some things. If it is for just self-advertisement, there's a problem to that. Yes, sir. Do you get what I'm yes, saying? Sir. Oh, it really has yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, two questions to ask us. Two questions. Number one, what is so far in all of this my teachings, and you've been listening to me for some time? I want to ask you a question. What do you consider to be the most important thing 
in your understanding of everything I've been teaching, not just now, not last month, but generally, what has become the fundamental thing that you think is like the central thing that is, it doesn't have to be the same for everybody, that you think is peculiar to you, like, this is the core of the matter that you can say that you understand. That's this, this is the cocoa of everything we are saying, or that applies to you, or for the kingdom living, or for your personal finance. What do you understand as the most important, vital conversation that you think we've been trying to, that you, that's for you, I mean, anybody? application of peace through wisdom by mm. <laughs> Ah, that's a good one. That's on equation there. Application of faith through wisdom. I would rather say with wisdom by grace. Okay, that's very good. Yes. Mark that down. Don't forget it. Yes. Please, I have down for you. I know. We should be conscious of the almighty nature. Fantastic answers. Wow. Can someone let me come to those two answers now, please? It's not a couple of things. First of all, daily living as an individual is learning to speak to situations, not necessarily situations you see maybe from people around you, but situations that might be going on in the mental space and in my head. Like take for example, there are times where maybe I'm having some kind of good thing that I don't know where it's coming from. I could easily say, peace be still, um, because it's like there's storm going on in my mind and there's a pang that comes from your words, that's like the words of faith. Mm-hmm. Then for my finances, it's given. Not so, when it comes to the things of God and to, um, should I say, propagating of his kingdom, that I should always be ready to be a financier to make sure that when they say so 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 and so gave to the advancement of God's work, that my name should always be there. Even if I don't get to give as much as others might, or I should always be a giver and faith to um, be practiced through our words, through speaking. And speaking also gives life to uh, a lot of things in one's life. And that also we should pray to get the wisdom to let go because those are things that basically they design us to being rooted to one spot instead of advancing. Fantastic. I, I particularly appreciate the way you constructed your words. God bless you. Please sit down. Thank, Thank you very much. Let's give a round of applause. Yes, sir. Uh, um, one, of, one thing I, I always understand from your message is that, first of all, you speak, you talk, and you teach with full assurance that you know God. Meaning that being a member of Virtuous Christian Center, you should know God. Because like you said, those that know they are God, they shall be strong. And your, the way you intro, you, it's, like, it's like you stand there and you are like, come. Nobody come to me, look, this is God. This is Jesus. This is heaven. Now, go back to where you are. You are on earth. But you shouldn't just live on this earth like an ordinary man. There is power through the knowledge that you have gotten that you can use to triumph over systems and structures of this world. Now, when you've triumphed over systems and structures of this world, it is not so that you can be a big man or a big woman and so that your neighbors will want to we want to know, we want to be your friends. It is so that that same successful life you are living here on earth, you can also introduce others into that same successful living and also bring them again to your man of God and your man of God directs them to God and they also go back to their life and they will live successfully. So this successful living now comes in the package of wisdom that we get from your messages. Now, the ability to desire to know God comes from the wealth of knowledge you have that you send to us through the word. 
Now, the capacity to be able to live successfully here on earth, it is through the knowledge of faith that we have in God. Now, the ability to be able to get those resources that are already around us, it is through the wisdom that we have already learned through the abundance of supplies that God has for us. Now, the ability for you to manage yourself while living that life and not, and not be distracted, it is through that, that reminder that you always tell us that we deliberate, meaning that before, before you talk, think, choose the compass before the clock. Before you go, ask. So meaning that even, even when we are living that life, we are always having a constant connection to a divine source of intelligence. Now, that is not all of it, because at the end of it all, we came because we saw wisdom, we saw grace, and we felt the power of God. We ourselves now become transformed to actually becoming that same person that we aspire to have been. Now, after being transformed, you send us out that, go and get this done, go and get this done. I'm not, so the practical explanation of this was, when I came to church in 2019, I was just a simple guy in QA doing some stuff. When I was hearing messages about Think Global, not Luca, I was hearing messages about acceleration and movement of the spirit. I was hearing messages about divine ideas. I was like, I need to do something with this. And I went to do it. Though I was able to get some things done, I, I was still able to come back again and still continue that journey. Meaning that if you come here, the message you are really teaching is that we are transforming men. Whoever you are, whether you are rich, maybe you are wealthy, your own transformation might not be in terms of changing your mentality for finance, for wealth, or for that. There is something you don't know about God that you can get to learn here. Now, if you come here and you are coming from a background that your back is on the ground, you still get a message that will be able tra to transform you. Now, let's say you have the, you even know, you even know Christianity, you know all these things. Now, there is still a wisdom you don't even have in your marriage. So, it is more or less like, I see, I see, I see what I'm getting here more like water that at different places, at different situations, there is always a need for it, and there is always a purpose for it. What time in a dam will generate electricity? What time in your pot will cook food? What time in your mouth will quench your taste? So water inside will be able to ship goods from, from China to Nigeria, from US to, to wherever. Still that same water, if it's too hot and you put it on your skin, it will burn your skin. That same water, if it's at, it's at, a, at a certain temperature, it will be able to help you even bathe well. So I see it like more or less like a very versatile and the completeness of full knowledge. Pulling that thought from somewhere. Yes. So, and what surprises me is that you you tell us not to end with what we get here. That we should go and search. So I just also noticed that even when you are searching, like I I do this, like there's a book I had to go and look for when I asked a question many days ago, and you said that everything is centered around love. I had to go and look for a book that will speak into that love. And just a few pages, I was very sure. So meaning, still meaning that it is, it is still knowledge that whether you are reading one small paper, whether you are reading one, so long it is containing the word of God, that same word of God, you still find it through the wisdom you are getting from the messages. Meaning that it is really, it's really clear. Now, I would want to make this last example. Before I came to Virtues, I attended a church that their own doctrine is we are so-so and so-so church. We do not add, we do not mix, we do not do that. I had never at any point in time listened to any message that contradicts their own basics. So meaning that if they are black and white, people really don't want black and white anymore. People want color. So now, the ability to be able to add that color to it and not make it too colorful, meaning that there is nothing added to that word of God. There is nothing being subtracted to that word of God. If at any point in time something will be added, there will be a disclaimer that I am the one that is telling you that when Jesus Christ said they bring bread, it was because bread is his favorite food. Mm -hmm. So 
those kind of examples as what people will say that by divine revelation jesus christ told me that this is his bread mm. so I, I still have to put that there that for instance even if a catholic enters this church now and they are not surface catholic they are really deep they will be able to still know that see there is nothing being nobody is mesmerizing you nobody is whining you nobody is kicking you left and right mm. but just as i made that example in water if you don't know how to handle the wave in the ocean, that same ocean that will push a ship can drown you. Mm -hmm. So it is now left for you to know how to enter into virtues that your capacity nowhere is meeting you and be able to scale through that, that, that ocean of knowledge, that flood of knowledge. If not, if you take too much, it can make you want to do more than yourself. If you take too little, it can make you want to stay under your capacity. So you have to always be checkmating yourself Ah, I've missed this one. I need to go and take this one. I've missed this one. And the last ah, bishop, let me just start. Okay, another one now. It's like there is this there is this capacity that makes me that makes me impressed. It's like you enter as simple as you enter a chemist shop and you tell the chemist, ah, I have a headache. The headache is doing me from this side of my brain. Chemist, this one is not parastamon. I'm using chemist as the simplest example mm -hmm. because you should go to a doctor, a doctor refers you to a pharmacy and you yeah. take your dog. So like that capacity to be able to know this one free, this one fast, mm -hmm. this one sing, mm -hmm. this one dance. There was a time that you told me, Shedra, just be dancing. Mm -hmm. And I only did that. And that was it. So I just want to also say that there is this, there is this, that I would like, there is this direct there's this clarity in capacity to be able to recommend your solution for you you don't even like even if you don't have faith in the solution just follow the process first in the process it must work Amen. so however that happens i just note i just note that if you're having issues with your marriage and you come plainly bishop will be able to give you what to do that this one you need to fast this one go and read this book this one if it's not my feed, I will tell you, I will take, I will send you somewhere else to go and get that solution. Very so to me, that is a lot of clarity in, in, in your ability and your purpose and capacity. That it means that anybody that comes close can always get. And ah, Bishop, sure, let me stop. <laughs> So if you connect every or what everybody has said, when you relate with everybody, one thing I see is the heart 
that you have for God that is so genuine. I'm trying to, that is one part I'm honestly trying to, um, to also um, learn. If it is giving, if it is living, if it is by faith, if it is by righteousness, it's that heart. So that heart is, is so strong. And again, one major thing that I've also learned this year is to connect. So for me, it's quite, it has been very difficult thing because some of us learn to revert people a lot and no one to so abuse. But that connection, like that early morning I called, it was just a, it was just a, and I call, or the day we took turns that you prayed for us, and then the, the word you said was accurate, and I'm like, how? Oh. Then I feel that you are also being very truthful and honest with us, and that has helped in my own daily living as a Christian. You know, you also charge us to say, just charge, don't tell lies. <laughs> as simple as that. If it's like, don't just let it just go, right? So I feel that those little principles for daily living has also really helped my own faith, helped my own journey. Praise and I hope that we'll keep learning as we well. pray. Praise, Praise God. God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Okay, I want to talk to you. You want to say something? Because I want to teach you. All right, but our time is fast spent. Do you want to write it or we'll take it at another time? Let's take it at another time. Or you want to take this? Okay, okay. Quickly, let me allow you to share. I know, get ready. Nice shot shot. The maximization of our abilities, mm -hmm. both physically and spiritually. Mm -hmm. And giving mediocrity no chance. Because when you hear the word they are saying, you will not know that that's the kind of thing you want to say. God will bless you. Yeah. I know. Sure. So, my take is the organization of everything is practical the same. Practical Christianity. Wow. Yes. Mm -hmm. Apart from the only knowledge of people like Christ and everything, how Christianity meets in the deep spirit, how faith works, how we can use Another side of the state for you. Wow. I see as they are saying another side of it, like you know the old <laughs> Thank you very much, Anna. Let's give a round of applause. So if I ask this question, I believe that one day we will all be judged. <laughs> I listen. I believe that there is a judgment seat of Christ. I believe that our hearts will go through fire according to 1 Corinthians 3. And what stands, what, what, what is remaining of your heart is what will determine the quality of glory that will be attached to you. You can bring that 1 Corinthians 3, number 7. You know? So, why I say that is because I want to teach something very faith over and over. But I want you to understand that your time or your times are in the hands of God. You may be trying to make a particular effort. I want you to give yourself some time. Are you listening? Yes. Don't don't feel don't feel like it's not working. Mm. Don't feel like you are. Are you listening to me? Yes, some of us we are naturally impatient, and you know it. Yes, and you are trying to now extend that impatience on God. Oh, yeah. Be patient with. Are you listening? Yes, Have a genuine walk. A genuine, I, and I'm serious. <laughs> Some of us don't realize the need to, you know, be authentic enough to be angry when you are angry. Mm. And you need a bit of it. Some of us don't know when to be kind when we need to be kind. Mm. Some of us, our old nature is still fighting us. All those things were programming in your life for 20 something years. You have been programmed. And guess what? You are launched to the world to fail. <laughs> so deprogramming you is a lot of Because for so long you have seen one particular way of thinking as right. And I really want us to see it, you know, as 
a project. See what it says. It says, so then neither is he that planted anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth increase. May God give us increase. Amen. Amen. Verse 10. It says, now he that planted and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward. Someone say, every man shall receive his own reward. Every man shall receive his own reward. He that planted will receive his reward. Eh? And he that water it shall receive his reward. It's just saying, God is watching what you are doing. We are all here now. Music director, AMD, Technica, DQ. God is checking everybody. Are you listening? Yes, sir. God is judging everybody. For him to be able to reward you, he must have checked what you did. Mm -hmm. Do you get what I'm saying? Yes, so he says, every man shall receive his own reward. Now, let me tell you something. You know that there's some things that we do. When you write an exam, you might think what you wrote should give you A. <laughs> Yes, sir. <laughs> English, but it's like that, but when they say like essay, you wrote everything in your mind. You read it on to just see me. My last is on T7. It's not because you did not write. Is that what you wrote was rubbish? Compared to the marking scheme. I listen to what I'm Now, I want your marking scheme to not be your own standard. Let it be the word of God. It is how much you do against God's standard that will determine your reward. Look, let me tell you something. As a pastor, eh, let me just tell you this. I've had pastors preach. Men of God preach, and I'm like, they should, they should throw up this pastor. You don't know what you are teaching. But his church is way bigger than ours. Mm. And he's very hungry. Mm. I do you want to tell you that what you are saying is rubbish? I used to tell them sometimes. <laughs> but what I'm just trying to say is that, because very, do you get what I'm trying to say? Yeah. In terms of certain things, then you see, while I trust God for the Big cathedral. I must stay faithful what I'm doing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Not faithfulness that I don't know what that is. No, it's with joy what I'm doing. Not managing. No, it's with great joy. Yes, sir. <laughs> Do you understand what I say? It's with great delight. Because that's what God checks. Every man shall receive his own according to his own labor. According to his own. How are you laboring? With that laptop, how are you doing it? That don't take this stupid alone. All of us, all of us, as I'm planting our water, everybody will collect it. Everybody, you like you had the word, you did not do anything, we judge you still. So don't say, I, I was not teaching you. He, he's checking you. And I'm just trying to share this because I feel the need. On, on the other day, I was talking about eternity. It's not because I want to be old school pastor. I'm just telling you the truth. That there is a, every man is own. You there's your own reward based on your own labor. So when we give you a chance to walk in church, it's so that you can have your own reward. Yes, sir. Do you see what I'm trying to say? Yes, he said, "Okay, this one, you are not doing." He says, "Do it as unto the Lord," because you think that your idea. Just, what are you supposed to support your man of God? How are you supporting him? There will be a reward. There's somebody that will give the reward. It's according to my own reward. See next verse. Last time. Last time. Because some of us don't understand that that's your child. God will judge how you took your your parents, God will judge. Your wife, God will judge. Your husband, God will judge. Your pastor, God will judge. Some of us live like we don't know. And what you benchmark with is not that. I don't feel anything. I don't like all this problem in ministry. That is what God will reward you for. If there was no problem, there is no one. It's not what's rewarding. It's the things you survive that makes it rewarding. You just want. I don't like what they score it. It's the that you survive core That's what it makes us reward you. <laughs> that you survive the core for my sake. Hey, hey, I'll come and collect the reward. What you're doing for my sake? Come and collect. That's what Joshua stole Peter. No man has left father, mother, and everything that will not be rewarded in this life and the world to come. Yes. Life eternal. That is not that said. Mark 10. Do you see what I'm trying to say? So I'm pointing our hearts to the reward. And I'm, why, why I'm doing this is because so you know some people say heaven at last. It's not just heaven at last. It's which light like one has yes, that will determine the quality of heaven at last. Yes, sir. Because you can be yes. for we are laborers. You see what it says? What are we? Just think that all I just do, and, and, and that's what I want to highlight tonight about self-centeredness. You know, the 
the power of this thing is that you will think that you are, you are doing your best. You are lying to yourself. Yourself. Eh? So we are laborers with God, not for God, with Him. Yes. We are working with Him. There's a difference between laborers for God. In other words, we are, what God is trying to reap, which we are going to reap. What God is sowing, which we are sowing. As God is working, I'm working. Look at Mark chapter 16 from the beginning. Mark 16, 20, 20, 21. Mark 16, 20, 21. Take a look. So, all of this, we are coming back to this scripture. So, if there's a way you can read this alternate, just see what it says. It says, and they went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord working with them. Do you see that word again? Working with them. We are not working for God in you. We are working with God. So God is working and working. Is that not what Jesus Christ said? My father walked in that too. I also walk. This kingdom work is work, sir. To, to do things right is not always easy, sir. Not easy. To forgive is not always easy. Hmm. To speak truth is not always easy. Yes, sir. But that's what he said is the work. He says, my father, he said, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. He's not confirming the gift, he's confirming the word. So if the word is not there, that's why I told you, build on word. Don't build on signs, gifts. Those things don't stand. Why am I doing this tonight? I want to draw your attention. Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. To the fact that there is a place for our godly reward. That's why I say, if you're in this house, you should be working for God. It's a privilege. Let me say this with all sincerity. Look, if you are still in this house and death is a threat, you know I got my message. Whether by rapture or by death, you will meet the Lord. By now, you should have settled what the realities are. Look at Oye Kaweni. Love her so much. Finished singing, I passed out. Yeah, I'm sure she's a believer, and I heard her story, and I believe that she's with the Lord. You can't control your time. Yes, sir. The thing you can control is when? Based on faith. But death is true. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, rapture. The way I see things now, it's not like it's be rapture, it's going to be death. What am I trying to do to us tonight? I want to share something with us, and it's very simple. The important one, before I go there, let's read it. It says, Thank you. You are God's husband, you are God's guilty. So it says, We are God's husband. So there are three things here. With God, we are God's husband, and we are God's vineyard. Eh? And then we are God's beauty. I see what he's saying. Yes. So he has given us three ideas here. We are working with God in his husbandry. We are the ones who we are working with him in also. At the same time, we are working with him in his building. So there's an agricultural description, there's an architectural description. I see. So he's telling them, look into those sites. They perfectly describe how the relationship works. Now we say everybody is building the building. The building is building the brick area. As you are working for God, you two are getting better, but you are getting rewarded for working for God. You are getting better for it, or you are getting rewarded for being better. What a double deal. See, now verse 10. See what it says in verse 10. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another builder there. Now we take heed how we do that there. So we take heed. We take heed how we do what I'm doing. Don't come and scatter what I'm doing. When I do uh, technical or media, don't come and scatter my work. Take it how you build. Take it how you build. Make sure that you are complementing what I'm doing, not contradicting it. And so he says, next line. Next line. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Somebody say amen. Amen. Verse 12. Quickly, quickly, please. I want to quickly please. Now, if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, a stock. Please, look at the, at the instruments for building. Gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stock. All of them respond to fire differently. Do you agree with me? What is stock? What is hay? What horse heat? That one very good for fire now. Fire will go out. Wood, very good for fire. Stubble is like sawdust. Yeah? Stones. Precious stones, actually. 
It's a kind of silver, gold. All of them respond to fire differently. It now says, verse 13, every man's walk, are you listening? Yes, sir. Every man's walk shall be made manifest by light, according to Ephesians 4, 16. That light, whatever does make manifest is light. For the day which is light shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. Are you listening? Yes, yes, sir. Sir. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. The work has been done. Now it's to check the quality. What sort of work did you do? Like what I'm doing in virtues now. I might not have built a cathedral, but I'm building lives here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I'm committed to it. Yes, sir. And my blood. What kind of work is it? Is it we'll check what kind of work sort of it is? Quick, let's see the next person. It says, if any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. So not everybody's work will abide. Some people's work will abide. If you put gold into fire, eh, it filters it. But it's that will probably fall off. It becomes more refined. But if you put hay inside fire, Everything will burn up. Mm-hmm. Some people's work is ashes. Mm-hmm. And what determines the quality is the integrity of the heart. Not I tried. Now, some people are not even qualified to even be tested because they did not do anything. They are not so we are saying. <laughs> Give us one good or give us one crown. <laughs> Nothing for you. In receiving what you do not labor for. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Yes, sir. So he says, he says, if any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. I didn't write Bible. Hmm. Victor, do you, you know I didn't write Bible. But he himself shall be saved. But yet, as by fire. That means, all oh, well, we have entered the escape as by fire. I, I didn't listen to what I'm saying. Yes, sir. That's why I used to wonder how some people, which gospel was taught to some people. It might look very funny, but let, let me tell you something. The Bible says that whoever is rich towards life and not rich towards God is a fool. Mm-hmm. Luke 20, 12, verse 21. He says you are rich towards life, but you are not rich towards God. It's not wise. Jesus talking. He said, "Don't lay up treasures only on this earth. Lay up treasures in heaven when neither must." So tonight is just an attempt for me to. Uh, so so is it that lay up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God? I want to ask: Are you rich towards God? Hmm. Are you rich towards God? How can you be rich towards God? Number one, so let's be clear. Unequivocal in the souls you won. Number two, the souls you established as disciples. Mm-hmm. Your disciples in Christ. If you have plenty of spiritual fire and you are not discipling people, you are problem. Mm-hmm. It's disciples. It's disciples. Mm-hmm. Being rich towards God requires disciples. Number three, being rich towards God is service. Service in God's house. Are we being blessed here? Yeah? Yes, yes, the question I ask you is how do you represent either of these three? And then number four is yourself. Yourself as a sacrifice. Self sacrifice. Selflessness. That's how to be rich towards God. Which is also an expression of service. Don't forget, I'm talking about yourself because there's service in doing something for God, and the service as your life unto God. Do you remember that scripture, which is your reasonable order of service? Do you remember that scripture in uh, Romans 12? So I want to ask you, what what is your benchmark for everyday living? How do you benchmark every day? You know what I mean by benchmark? Chris, does everyone know what I mean by benchmark? Yes. What standard do you set? Is it the you? 
or the contrast to you that should grow? Are you listening to what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Look at him. Let me tell you something. That this whole thing, eventually at some point, will become a personal journey. At some point, it has to be. So he says, he says, I have a secret of my mother, but you present your bodies in living sacrifice. You know? And I said, service and service. Since that's your reasonable service. That's you want to God. That Lord, I belong to you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Lord. So whether on the camera, on the laptop, on the pulpit, when you come to church, you clean the pulpit, it's on to God. Yes, that quality of service that you saw this place dirty. You say no, it will not be dead. That's what you uh -huh. that you are talking. It will not go all rewarded. <laughs> or through the word, sending you up by preaching the word of God. What kind of commitment do I have? What kind of devotion do I have? You know that if I tell you, give an offering, when God did not say so, my work will be tested. It will be tested. You might not get anything, but God will judge the man speaking. Are you listening to me? Yes, That's why I want to live conscious. You know, a lot of you have said different things. I just want to show you what is most important. Are you listening? The most important thing for me to know is that you are God's bride. Mm -hmm. That's the most important. That God looks upon you wherever you are and says, I'm proud of you. That's my job. I'm here to make that happen in your life. That God looks at you and says, well done, Shady. If nobody knows you, I won't go to know you. I won't go to be proud of you. Through the quality of wisdom, the quality of impact, the quality of investment in the kingdom. That's my job. And tonight I just want to share that with us. That that is ultimately the whole thing. How that you become God's pride. Spirit, soul, and body. At any level, this thing meets you. It can meet you rich like you really said. It can meet you poor. I won't go to look on you and say, have you seen Shake? Mm. Since he met that guy called Alexander, his life has already been the same. Yes, and me and my own, I was chilling with, you know, some nice Jews there. Mm -hmm. God said, I need this guy to meet Alex. Some of you have come like that. Very crazy you. <laughs> Very crazy. They look quiet. They are crazy. And it's not small crazy. And God said, go and meet Alex. He'll help <laughs> And you thought it was coincidence that brought you here. You know now yes, sir. that it looks like. Because you know that it's not exactly the crowd that brought you. Yes, sir. Yeah. It's the impact. Yes, sir. It's the personal talk. That there is a Jesus here we cannot deny. Yes, yes sir. sir. Yes, sir. And that's what I want to challenge you to, to have that commitment to live that that level of I will I will benchmark my better version, the better version. Of it. Are you listening? To that? So where you are now, there is something that you need from where you are to the place where you ought to be. Yes, sir. The next place. I'm not talking about far far future. I'm saying the next line of action, the next line of engagement. Yes, Are you listening to what I'm yes. saying? Pray about it. I say, Lord, open my mind. Open my sight. Open my mind. Open my understanding. Open my understanding. Can we pray that prayer? Open my spirit. Open my mind. Open my understanding. It's, it's, you've lived with it for so long, it's affecting you. As an operating, you know when operating system is working on that ground? 
You can be pressing the app, it's not answering. You can be doing manner of things. We can be preaching at you, it's not going to work. Because the thing working is inside. Today, I'm going to pray. Validly, or sorcery, whichever one you pray. I'm told, whatever system thinking that is in my head, not allowing your word have to be fixed, I will deliver to this. Make a prayer. Whatever Thank <laughs> you. 